You are listening to Reels Movie Podcast. I am your host, Z. And before I get into this review, let me remind you to subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button, leave a comment below, hit that bell for notifications, and you'll never miss a future episode. The latest movie of the Conjuring Universe is finally here. It is the third movie of the series, and I'm talking about Annabelle Comes Home. While babysitting the daughter of Ed and Lorraine Warren, a teenager and her friend unknowingly awaken an evil spirit trapped in a doll. One of the things I was really looking forward to after seeing the previews for this was that Ed and Lorraine Warren were going to be part of the story. I said it before in my previous review of Annabelle, and the trailers really made you believe that that was going to happen. Boy, that was a big fucking lie to you. Patrick Wilson and Vera Farminga are only in the movie maybe 10 minutes. At best, you know, it's around 10 minutes. Their only story here was to bring Annabelle into the house, and then they leave for some reason. So what gets me is that the Warrens are the main focus of this entire universe. So them having this small part really makes me question what direction they are going with the universe now with them only having small parts here and there. I really did enjoy Annabelle Comes Home more than the other two of the series because this one just wasn't about the demon that is attached to the doll. All of the evil artifacts locked in the Warren's basement are now free, and they terrorize the girls in the house. With all the stories that were told about just a few of the artifacts, opening up a brand new set of stories that will most likely spin off to other movies. I respect the hell out of what James Wan is doing with this franchise. is building up so many different stories and having them all tied together. I just kind of wonder what is his end game with all of this. Will they have a final movie and everything comes back at once? I guess that's just something we're going to have to wait and see. Now, it's pretty surprising that you don't get a lot of jump scares here. Maybe one or two or three. It's very few. But there's a lot of tense moments that have some nice build. But zero scares. It's... Very disappointing that they took a step back on the third movie, but it still has some nice moments. I love the scene in Judy's bedroom when she throws the Annabelle doll against the wall, knocking over her lamp that has a co color wheel attached to it. Then the wheel spins, and the shadow of the doll changes with every color. It gets a really cool visual to watch that. But honestly, Annabelle takes a back seat to the other characters like the Ferryman, a Feely Mealy game, and the Bride character. It is later revealed that Annabelle is controlling everything. So Annabelle and the Demon is pretty much the puppet master, so to say, with everything that's haunting the girls. So it actually proves the fact that I've been waiting for that Annabelle is the most powerful entity in this entire franchise. If this demon can control all of these other artifacts, that makes it really powerful, and we actually got to see that. One of the things that I really had to just roll my eyes and scoff at was that the lame attempt at humor that is being forced into this movie. The babysitter Mary Ellen has this crush on this boy named Bob. Throughout the movie, they keep saying, Bob has balls, like that's his nickname. Bob has balls, Bob has balls. I'm not talking, they didn't say it once or twice. It was around 10 times by pretty much every character in the movie. I'm talking about the Warrens, I'm talking about Mary Ellen, her friend, Judy, a, p a random pizza guy. Everyone said it. It was funny a few times. But then it got very repetitive and boring. And it just was not funny. And what's really funny is that the nickname that Bob got was more backstory for a minor character than we got with the main character of Mary Ellen. Yes, I know she babysits Judy. She's known Judy for a while. And she has asthma. That's it. Her friend had a better backstory when she's trying to talk to her dad who died in a car accident a year ago. That's backstory. No, Marion doesn't have backstory. It's a real shame. 
because I really liked Madison Eastman's performance. I probably butchered her name. And I think she really did a really good job here with the character. And I liked following her character. But she had zero backstory. Why should we care about her? I'm going to give Annabelle Comes Home a C+. Plus. Thank you for listening to this review of Reels Movie Podcast. If you like this review, hit that thumbs up button. Drop a comment below. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell for notifications. And I'll see you later.